Hey, South Point, we're in day number four of our devotional series called Finding Peace in Uncertainty. So far, we've talked about what the true definition of peace is. We've talked about how to have peace of mind and how to have peace of heart. And hey, if you've missed any of those, you can catch up on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Now today, our hope is that together, we'll be able to tackle what might be the toughest area of life to have peace in. And it's peace in our souls. For me, this has been a lifelong struggle to have peace in my soul. I found that discipline helps me to have peace in my mind. I found that loving others like Jesus helps me to have peace in my heart. But peace in my soul? If I was honest, that's been much tougher. And maybe peace in your soul has been difficult for you too. Now, as I thought about this, I realized why peace in our souls can just be stupid hard. And here's why. It's because peace in our soul is always tied to the value that we feel. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up believing that my value was always based on winning at life. And this is the message that bombards all of us on a daily basis through ads on social media, in sports, in movies, and every other medium. And that's because the world loves winners, because winners have value. And if I'm honest, I don't always feel like a winner. Which leads you and I to a natural question today. What does it mean to win at life? And while the specifics may look different for you and for me and for everyone, there's always the same three pieces in everyone's definition of winning. And here's what I mean. Everyone wants some success, everyone wants some satisfaction, and everyone wants some security. But here's the kicker of those three things, success, satisfaction, and security. They're often momentary feelings that often fade and require a constant energy and effort to recapture. Now here's what I've experienced and I wonder if maybe you've ever felt the same way. There's this uncontrollable chaos in the world that no matter how hard I try to control, it's trying to keep me from winning. And I seem to lose to this chaos on a regular basis. But don't worry, I'm an ankle biter so I get back up and knock the dust off and I try again, only to have chaos come in and so I get back up and I try again and then chaos comes in and I try again. And if I was honest, sometimes I get tired and getting beat by the brokenness world can lead to a crushed soul. And I wonder, can anyone relate? But God in His goodness gave me one of those light bulb moments where I realized what I was doing was flawed and that maybe I should stop. You see, God has revealed that my value and your value and our value doesn't come from success or satisfaction or even our security. No, our value comes from what God was willing to sacrifice to conquer the chaos we couldn't. Do you see the difference? It's not about the three of success, satisfaction, or security that lead to value. It's what God was willing to sacrifice to save us from ourselves. What if winning at life wasn't about what we accomplished, but instead by the who that loves us? Not the what we've done, but the who that cares. You see, God doesn't love us because of our talent. God doesn't love us because we get it right and we behave. God's love isn't dependent upon our performance. His love is based on our purpose to be His son or daughter. You see, we were meant to be children of God. I realized that I need to keep reminding myself of this following truth and I wanted to share it with you. Are you ready? Bad circumstances don't always mean that I'm bad or that God's mad. It just means that we live in a broken world. Today, I'd like to remind us of the words of the Apostle Paul that he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He wrote this letter to the followers of Jesus in Rome, and we can find it in Romans 5, 6 through 8. And here's what it, it says. It says, you see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The greatest news that you and I could ever hear is what I'm sharing with you today. Our value is secure. Our value is unmovable. The God who created everything loves you. He loves me. And it is not dependent on our goodness or our success. It is based on God's sacrifice and what his son did, what we couldn't do. You see, our value is always determined by what someone is willing to pay. And God gave himself on our behalf. He paid the highest price possible so that you could know that you are loved and you are valued. May God's grace give you the peace in your soul that the world can never give. And don't forget as you go forward today, 
You matter deeply to God.